pops him and target him out completely. Sure, the Morphling came out, and as God's mentioned, it did have a possibility. Well, we'll find out, ladies and gentlemen. The players are in the booth. It's time for Game 4 in the Grand Finals. PSG LGD versus OG Grand Finals Game 4. Game Four. We've had three fantastic games so far. OG took the first one. PSG LGD now leading 2-1 with a two-game run against OG. The top two teams here at this year's International. And they're looking to take one more step close to the Aegis. And the bands are underway. Spectre, Tiny, and Silencer. No big difference. OG this time once again. Banning out the Silencers themselves when they don't have that uh, second pick. They have the first pick and they're banning out the Silencer. Definitely seen this submerging meta within the BO5. Small little adjustments, you know, will yeah. be made from game to game. Curious to see where heroes like Enchantress end up. Yeah. LGD had a two games. That's something OG. You talk about Seb in the off lane now, having a better game, stepping up. His best game, Enchantress. Oh, yes, best game ever. He carried that game. <laughs> and that's a hero I wouldn't mind seeing OG pick up early on. This, uh, another big hero as well. Top half of the band pool getting very crowded. You know, certain heroes getting pushed out. You know, all these new faces that haven't been there the whole tournament long. Oh, there's a face the crowd likes. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Really putting up the force in and, game three. And what a game. And that's that's where uh, the point that I made in the last panel about Chalice being so good on some of these newer heroes in the Metal Light Weaver becomes so threatening. Because they thought that was an offlane Weaver before yeah. most of that draft. And all of a sudden, it's Ame on Weaver at the end. Yeah, you just have to treat it as both, which can be very frustrating, obviously. A little more threatening, I think, than uh, Alina in many ways. And OG, do you take out that here? Yep, respect to that Weaver. So this time, uh, it is uh, PSG LGD on the Radiant side with the second pick, and that's OG on the Dire with the first pick overall. So I think if there was a chance... FY gets the praise, he definitely deserves that for last game. Uh, if there was a chance to take one of those earlier, like, kind of risky tops in here, I feel like this is a great setup, right? Oh. You have the first pick, you see two, and then you have a chance at that fourth pick. And then yeah. you have some extra bands, too. Uh, Earthshaker out of the pool, but the Wisp is still in. This is the Enchantress. I imagine those are heroes OG's kind of considering between the two all. I, I go Edge for sure. Mm. I think I think with the way Seb played that hero yesterday. Yeah. And the best thing about that is that it's a non-sacrificial hero that yeah. also benefits Jerax so much. This isn't some Treant or some Wyvern. No, they're goal Wisp? Okay. The yeah, right. Iodryer is scary because it's pretty good against the Ench as a general matchup, so you're probably just thinking like, you know, if we get this Ench, they're going to go Iodryer. And already... it, they well, banned the Shaker too, so yeah, the, the now that's not available. Out. So the funny thing is though, it, it is in, in, in some ways, but on the other hand, when you have that long range initiation, that Earthshaker Kunkka combo that they had in the last draft, that can initiate deep into the team fight, catching the Wisp with the tail end of those stuns, I, all of a sudden the Wisp feels very vulnerable to the burst damage in the chain. I would be so fine with a in first base here, honestly. Like, a flexibility of that is a support, too. Well, you knew, and you knew when you were taking Wisp that that was going to be the price of price of admission. All right, the Enchantress once again going in favor of PSL TV as we hear cheers for No Tail. The other hero we have yet to see appear yet is Drought Ranger. That was yeah, right. featured very prominently in some of the earlier rounds of the main stage, but hasn't come up here Both in the grand They're going to steal the flat cannon. Oh, this is a team that is stealing itself right now. It's a first phase Morphling here. I feel like you go away from the gyro yeah. and they go yeah. to the yeah. And they kind of get the favorable carry matchup. But something I know, like uh, some of the players backstage, people you were saying, it's not really about the carry matchups anymore. Yes. You need to make sure you have a good lane. So you lane can't just pick this PL thinking it's going to counter a Morphling. You need to make sure he has a good lane. It is one of the best heroes against Enchex, and I think it's much more picked against the Ench than the Morphling, the yeah, lane matchup, agreed. with all the Agi you get from your Phantom Rush, you've got the Nuke as well. Uh, PL does seem like one of the better heroes against Enchantress. Yeah, we can take care of that Alchemist right away too. The Earthshaker's already gone, so a couple of heroes that uh, PL does not enjoy playing up against too much. Maybe even Bad Kanka too. That's a hero that matches up I, well against most of Thompson's mids. I am so down with that. I would have. I actually thought that the the first phase Kanka by Trent could have been a sick call. I'm so down with Banning Kanka. Also, you think about Banning Phoenix after that last game, honestly. And, and they're so uh, LGD correctly now focusing on that Thompson hero pool. Would not be surprised to see the Boker taken out. Yeah, I mean they focused on several. Arc Warden has come out a couple times. The Pugna, the Monkey King, of course, last game being banned out. 
will OG take out the Kunkai here? It's also still the Ursa at play, too. Someone who yep. looked very good versus the PL. There are some questions in terms of like being kited. It depends on the IO pairing, too. And Seb has played the Ursa at that offline position, so that's definitely an option for OG. That's a hero that I think could have a lot of impact in this game. OG taking some of their time to figure out how this next phase is going to play out. It's tough. I wish they had like three or four bands here. The band the Storm, you know, yeah. it's like there's still Kunkka, there's still Phoenix. There's they know still Clinks too. Yeah, there's a lot of scary oh, heroes. Too many. But after that initial display from LG where they showed they're willing to first two pick a Storm, it's probably worth yeah. banning against yeah. them. Yeah. No, it's just a, it's a theory that holds in a lot of other sports. You, you try to never get beat the same way twice. So LGD have a relatively easy second phase here. Basically, just going to reveal both of their supports and then look for that 10th pick for maybe in the end. Hence why they OG using some of their bands for it. All of the top tier supports still left in besides the Silencer. We still have the Bane if they want that versus the IO plus one. We still have the Vengeful Spirit as well. That's kind of a nice position to be in where you're just picking supports here yeah. because you have the last pick of the draft. You don't want to get into this second middle stage and you're picking cores and having them get counterpicked along the way. So they're going to just basically set themselves up to get this 10th pick maybe hero that's going to have a great game. Yeah. PSG LGD once again continue to focus on the Thompson bands with that Pugna coming out. Now their turn to their next hero. Yeah, that would, that would be one of those cheekier strats that I alluded to before, this idea, like, they use this early sustain of the Pugna, healing up the Io, who's then tethering the Pugna, and it's like, yep. instant health and mana, and then they use that to sustain pushes early on in the game, very frustrating to deal with. Yeah. I expect to see a support here, the Venge is still in the pool, of course, we did see by X Nova. Yeah, Venge, another one of those heroes that we talked about, right, where it's so much prominence earlier on in the International, and then hasn't had as much priority, but definitely a good showing in the last game. Oh! Okay, not the most common hero versus PL, obviously, is there's some disadvantages there, because you can just dock Ganger up over the uh, Ice Shards. Yeah, but it's, a, it's the same, it's not quite the same theory, but it's similar to the Earthshaker idea. That Yep. The Enchantress right click, obviously that like Blightstone build on her, and Snowball then as well as a way to stop TPs and scan close. So how do you guys feel about this Chen pick? Because it does give you a support duo that's extremely low on disable. Yeah, I, I think it's good. That's been a big problem. It, it secures your safe lane though. Like that, you gotta yeah. give this PL a better lane. I think Chen has shown that he is one of the best supports to secure the safe lane. He's not this in game influencing hero he used to be that like yeah. pushes all your towers and wins you the game like at 20 minutes by just pushing everything, but he does give you a better early game. Yeah, but it just, it, it feels to me right now that the last two picks from OG need to answer this team fight potential on the yep. LGD side. They, they need to have some transition out of the laning phase. I think that's where you may see something like the, the Centaur come back for, for Seth. You're ever gonna kill him. Right now, they, these three heroes do not ever pose a threat to kill a Morphling. Is that what you really want? Is your leading stun, though? Centaur? Yeah. Like, so the yeah, animation yeah, yeah. is just <laughs> terrible. I mean, maybe if I mean, they even lose the, the waveform key true. on the, the keyboard or something, you might not be able to escape, but, like, my god, not the best initiator. <laughs> oh, you're on today, Trent. <laughs> well, PSG LGD, what are they looking for here? Another support? I also feel the the eighth pick is more likely going to be a, a mid for OG because they're going into the double pick, so you yeah, may as well pick Tops and Sears first. The thing but... you don't want banned. Yeah, but uh, it... I like how you can go like a greedier ranged hero when you have a Tusk, because Tusk doesn't necessarily need too much. But... Okay, they really want that Brewmaster. All right, so that means it's probably support Ench then. Uh, we, uh, again, we, we just yeah, talked about the same thing for this game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it, the, the the potential for outplay. For the, from the three and the four position is now so there for LGD, right? I mean, what what are you going to do as a as a as a Chen or an IO to counter the kind of team fight potential? Yeah, this is a great pick because it deals with the Phantom Lancer while also still having that strong lane. Uh, this is also why Enchantress is such a great opening pick because it can be pushed onto the five position role. That's yes. something OG yeah. themselves have done, and something X Nova is very comfortable playing as well as a five. If you uh, just look to hunt down this IO every fight too, right? Just toss him up the Cyclone. 
suddenly this major key of your draft emoji, your first overall pick, and just feel completely worthless. And not just the IO, but a lot of the tanky frontliners like the Centaur that we thought about are vulnerable to the exact same thing, getting tossed up. All right, it's game time. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Um, I'm back. Look, you, you, you got to the final of TI with this yeah. hero. This is uh, some Seth Nix or something that they want here, I feel like. Please ban Kunkka, though. I think they're on there. Oh, God, yeah. they less than ban Kunkka. Um, don't give me another yeah. chance. Yeah. But I uh, love it. You know, Thompson, put him on one of his signature heroes. Put him on one of his best heroes in your elimination game. This is the way to go out. It, or take a game five, ideally. Right. I, I mean, this is their shot, right? So give him what he's comfortable with. Uh, had a rough game, but it's great to see that they have the confidence, despite that earlier game, to come back. There's the center. Wow. Yeah, they will remove it, though. Do you, go back, I mean, do you go back to the Underlord here for a second? Oh, I, I don't like that hero. Though. They need a stun. <laughs> yeah. Need like, a stun. I mean, the hero it's feels really bad. Slow. You, need a, you need, like, a tanky frontliner, right? Kind of, you need a way to start a fight too. Invoker yeah. kind of gives you that with the way he plays the Quasvex Invoker with the uh, Spirit Vessel. No, right. so Enigma is okay. Ooh. I mean, maybe not the biggest set I mean, hero of all time, what? but there's no like, BKB cancel just yeah. yet. It allows you to push very early if you get a lead. It can actually bully in the lane some. But if you, if you pick Enigma and you don't win that lane hard, like, what does Enigma do in this game without a BKB? I mean, what, what does any hero do in this game? <laughs> Like, they have, they have right, excellent question on the panel. <laughs> oh, gee. I mean, Enigma is kind of the all-in push pick, though, too. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like you need some hero who can fight with this Quaswex Invoker, right? Because we're assuming, like, typical Invokers, what there you go ahead do is, yeah. uh, all right, an axe. That's good. That's good. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here's the problem. They they don't play this X Sword Invoker, right? You play this X Sword Invoker, you pick a Nyx Assassin, or you pick a Centaur War Runner. You go across the map, you blink, you stun, you stun strike, wow, gold. But Plus X Invoker, he needs someone who can actually go and fight with them in this early mid game. And so the Axe will be the answer here for Seb. Definitely like it. Good pairing with the IO and available for some cheeky creep. But it's I keep saying cheeky, yeah. but uh, you know the creep cutting is very good. But that's what I was kind of wondering with this last pick. Like you need an IO pairing. You want to have good strong lanes, and it yeah. also gives you a morphling solution. If he's playing on too much edge, you get that blink hole with blade now. You can blow him up. You can, but I tell you what, it has the same problem as the Centaur, that the, the, uh, the animation on that Berserker's call is pretty long. Well, OG have made their call here in the draft. We're just waiting for PSG LGD to answer the call with the very last pick here for Game 4. This could be your match point hero. Yeah. Oh, it's oh. baby. It's... Wow. Okay. Well, the Bloodseeker makes a return. We have all 10 heroes lined up. I mean, we talked so much about what OG can do. They're showing us some ideas here that they're going back to the roots. What are your thoughts, gentlemen? Thompson needs to have the game of his life. All right, Thompson needs the game <laughs> of his life. Well, this is the moment Thanks, to do it. Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready for game four. We'll have a chance to hear from Casey and the coach of PSG LGD. 357 and Helen, once again, thank you so much. Now, how do you feel about OG's draft? 嗯，他们的阵容前面输出有点低吧，然后节奏很依赖卡尔，然后觉得比较一般。Well, for their draft, they lack damage in the early game, so and they depend on the on the invoker for their tempo controlling. I think it's pretty average. <laughs> and how do you feel about your draft? 你的阵容呢？我我觉得我这个阵容，如果线上能处理好点，应该没什么问题。If we have good lanes, we're good. Good luck, best of luck. Thank you so much. Right, thank you. Great to hear some insight as we get ready for Game Four. PSG LGD playing to lift up the Aegis after one more win as OG tries to make a comeback run. We'll return to our casters, Odie, Merlini, and Fob. Thank you very much. Yes, game four now between PSG, LGD, and OG as PSG, LGD lead the charge in this best of five, two to one. Can they do it here? Is this the TI winning game, boys? We're seeing again OG trying something a little different. There's the Axe, another hero that people just aren't playing, but they're bringing it out here on their potential knockout game of the TIA Grand Finals. Such confidence, right? Like, they just lost with Chapman, they just lost with PL, and they, they just lost with Invoker, and they're like, doesn't matter, we're gonna stick with our comfort, try to just play our own game. And I like that they're at least sticking to their guns. And LGD's coach seems super confident. He's just like, yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the draft. 
So what, what uh, yeah, sort of the panel talks about this, this oh, offline here, this axe that gets picked up, it's, they were looking for a hero that sort of offers some sort of a disabled, do, do you think this was sort of the best option? Were there sort of other things that you're a little surprised that OG didn't prioritize over going for the axe? I don't know if I can think of anything just straight up the top of my head. I just can't remember all the bands and everything, but it's a hero that we just don't see. It's a hero we just don't see often for a good reason. I think he will destroy him in the team fight. You can cycle him, he's useless. Yeah. Like he, he, he won't be able to get back in position. You can even cycle him during the blink blade mail call if he's prepared. And yeah, he's going to do very well in lane, I would say. And he is a decent partner with the Wisp, but he struggles a lot in the mid game. Yeah, and even versus the Tusk too, right? In a lot of situations, yep. if the Tusk is in a good spot, you can get the snowball saves over and over again. So yeah, it's we'll see how it can work out for them, but I do feel like in the lane, the lane this axe, of course, will put on a good amount of pressure. And we'll see how well Chalice is able to deal with that down there on the bottom, and what sort of lanes we, we do see from PSG if they want to send down a support down there, or if they're going to just sack that bottom lane and leave Chalice alone. Some friendly tipping going, some nice exchange coming out there. As we do see, of course, Enchantress also. Ex Nova playing the support, Enchantress. Not something we see so often, but we have seen it relegated to that role, especially from OG. How many chickens have died at this spot? <laughs> Gotta be careful. Looks like X server's not going to be patient enough. The, the courier's starting to move up, but he's headed away from that middle lane as he'll look towards the top, as it seems, to join forces with FY and Arme, making sure that the Morphling can find the farm against Anna's PL in this safe lane. The same time, TP up from Jax. Time to join in, tethers across to Anna. And this mid lane, this will certainly be the one to watch. We saw Thompson Invoker already once here in this Grand Finals, and it did not have a good time. But top lane, the shards from FY out, trapping out Jarex and Nota. But Jarex has got the regen. Penitence from Nota onto FY will force back the Tusk. But this mid lane matchup, should this, should this go better for Thompson than it did when he played against Somnus' Kunk? Yeah, there's no way for him to kill the Fort Spear super easily, so yeah. he can actually use it this time. And be, I mean, he shouldn't get destroyed like last time. It's really going to be dependent on the side lanes, right? Like, if, if those side lanes start dropping low as soon as this Blood Sacred hits level 3, that's when you can start getting ran down very easily as an Invoker. Even with you have your Fort Spirits and everything up, it's it's very difficult because of that movement speed that you have. You have 282, and this Blood Seeker is going to be moving, for the most part, above 320 in this laning phase. I am I am a bit concerned for Thompson, but he has to be able to work really well around this Fort Spirit. Already these early levels, Somnus playing the lane perfectly in its aggression. 8 for 3 against the 3 for 1 on these early levels. In that mid 1v1 matchup. They've got Jerex low already. Ex Nova though. Jerex sort of bait them in. Ex Nova's got the fairy fire. Jerex, he will fall, but not before they get the kill on Ex Nova himself. FY also potentially trouble. Anna comes across. FY does still have a snowball. Potentially unlikely to save him as Anna. Surely he wants to still chase and indeed rushes forward. There's Jarex with the Teva. He's got the snowball to dodge the Spirit Lance at least, but FY very low. Actually gets taken down there. All right, the blast from No Tails Satire Tormentor. So OG getting themselves a second kill up top. But all those creeps out of the tower with no one farming them, they actually have a double wave on the side of OG going into LGD's tower. So yeah, they lost the tower and they lost, or they lost the hero and they lost first blood, but I think it's actually working out quite well for them. And we're seeing what pretty much is expected as well down on the bottom lane at the moment. Seb having that favorable matchup. 21 for 0 against the 10 for 1. Uh, he's just creep cutting and pulling it into the jungle, so he's actually farming just a bit more than that Brewmaster. I like that Jarex instantly reacted and just went top. And let's see what they can do with this. And they've got a triple wave coming under here too, so Ame might struggle a bit to get these last hits if Uji plays aggressive, which they are immediately. FY pops the shards out. Anna looking to get himself straight on top of Ame. Jarex is there with the tether on Anna. No tail in trouble as the three of PSG LGD focus down the chain and take the kill. Now with the snowball, they head over to Jarex. as Anna. Jarex, they're potentially in trouble. The fair fire from Jarex, healing Anna up a little bit. Jarex trying to look for the body blocks. The nuke damage from Ame not enough to kill off the PL as Jarex with the tether gets himself out as well. But mid indeed, Somnus diving in Thompson. He's got the cold snap. The tower heading into Somnus as well. But Somnus gets the final touch, gets the kill. He has got a fair fire and stick charges as well if needed. He doesn't even need to. The tango regen enough as Somnus gets the solo kill. Whoa! Woo. He's got his sunglasses on today. Just too much pressure coming out of top right now. It's really hurting Thompson's lane. This Bloodseeker is almost level 5 to a level 3 invoker. Yeah, Thompson's just really struggling with the CS too. Yeah. Pulling Blade and the Blood Rage is not enough. I mean, he does like the Quas Wex, but really struggles in the early phases in the game. It's, a, it's just he's sitting at like 100 damage or more on the Blood Seeker, not even including the Calling Blade. So Thompson walks up, actually gets caught oh, by the Blood Rage. He does. He walks into the Blood Rage. Now Somnus is just looking to chase him down as. Oh no! Thompson making a huge mistake in that middle lane. Top lane, No Tail will go down. Xana 
I'm gonna fight back, trying to chase down FY. They get the set out, Tormant to blast. The Spirit Lance as well as FY will fall. OG get a trade up top. But that middle lane indeed at top, so it looked like he felt that he could move up the ramp out of the blood right in time. But it kicks in, and Somnus in that middle lane, keeping that edge once again against the Thompson Invoker, but this time on the Bloodseeker instead of that Kunkka from earlier. I feel like I've seen this a few times where the Invokers have struggled a lot for Bloodseeker because he has very little moves, but he has zero points of wax, and he has no boots. He's actually looking like he might be going for a, a kill early, so... And that's with the Bloodseeker not even having boots yet. The Bloodseeker right. just has 50 movement speed over you at all times. And I don't know if Topson can play in this lane. They, they, they're just going to go and kill him once more instantly as soon as he shows back oh. up. Right away, he doesn't have TP. Yeah, he FY, he's in for the side. He's got a double damage rune as well. FY is there in underneath the tower, punching down Topson. Topson falls once again. Jarex comes in with a tether across. They're trying to find something to response, but Jarex, he's in trouble. He will live. Five. They get the kill. FY, he'll go down as well. So OG able to strike back in that mid lane with the rotation, getting the double kill. No, but Nova walks in and gets the easiest kill of his life there onto Jarex. As they will find a trade chalice as well. Looking for this wraparound. He's got level six, does have primal split available. CP back in from Thompson oh with no. the primal split ready to go. He looks towards Thompson underneath the tower. Thompson, he needs help, but he needs it now. Has he got any way of playing his way out of this one? He's only got points of course. He's also no escape for Thompson as the walk around gang from Chalice with that primal split successful. It's even more than successful. It's brilliant. Double kill for Chalice. As he just walks over to mid as soon as he hits six and gets that playoff. What a great offlane player. Uh, is. If you try and contest the axe, you're going to get destroyed. So he gets level six when the invoke is level four. And it's just grueling at this point. They're taking the tower already, too. So they're going to have access into the enemy jungle. They're going to have access into OG's jungle where Topson is going to have to. He's going to have to go to the jungle to try to catch back up here. He's level four. Oh man. A lot of weight is going to be on Seb. He's had this bottom lane, he's got good levels, and he's got decent farm too. He's top of the net worth this game. Very close to having the Blink Dagger on top of the Ring of Health. But TP's are heading down. Somnus seeing if we can find the rupture. Seb, oh, he goes to farm. That's going to give time for Somnus to close the gap, get the rupture. He's still pretty beefy, but is he beefy enough? I don't think so. The shards are out, trapping him in. The spin, though, the taunt, the sun strike. Seb, he gets, he gets the dunk off. The snowball save wasn't in time. And Jax, he's in with the tether. OG, they're turning this one around. They look to run down FY. FY with the snowball, the shards already used. There's no way to escape, or maybe the Jukes. Is it enough? Oh, it is. Seb, he gets fogged. He can't get the dunk off. FY why will survive. Oh, that's his blink dagger right there. But a very neat little play there from Seb, being able to hold his ground. The sun strike, the dunk just before FY could get that snowball save off. It almost looked like the Bloodseeker was brought into the snowball, but at the same time getting that dunk off Seb. He's actually decided to go for the Vanguard instead. Oh, just wanted despite to, having the money. Yeah, just wanted to tank up a bit more, I guess. I mean, as we saw in situations like that where he's getting beaten down by the Bloodseeker, it certainly will add that extra bit of time for Jarex to come in with those sort of plays. He's still going to get that blink at a very fast time, and they're going to really need him to make plays all around the map, because we already see PL's getting outformed a bit by the Morphling, the Bloodseeker to the Invoker comparison is crazy, and I mean, Chalice, Chalice has a blink already, so he's going to be the one making tons of moves around the map, and Sebastian has to match him. This Bloodseeker is certainly going to become a big issue unless Seb can come in with the place. Thompson, he's full committed on Exord for now. He is three points in, not having any in Wex. So, Ami has to be careful that they do have those deep wards down and he was walking around on one HP. So he has to be, be aware of the Sunstrike potential coming from Thompson. Seb down bottom. He's getting hunted, but he's out with the TP. Back up towards the Shrine. Gives him a tip on the way out as well. So it's better luck next time. As PSG LGD are now in position though to push down on the bottom lane, Chalice. Not quite got the mana for the primal split, he does now with the bottle charges, so he's ready to go, ready to fight if OG do head down bottom. But his top lane in fact where Anna and Jarex are placed and it looks like OG are unlikely to come down to here, at least before Seb has his blink dagger finished. OG's not able to really set up to push towers too well. They've, they've got a chance, they want to be able to take some more building advantage versus LGD's lineup, but it's LGD constantly knocking on their buildings. And they're also under leveled on the side of OG, really struggling. That Invoker just hit level 6, Chen's still level 4, as is the IO. So much weight gonna be in his axe and shoulders.
find play after play around the map to get... The thing is that that's the one thing that they can do, right? If once that Axe gets Bling Dagger, the way to get Topsy back in the game is yes. Sunstrike kills. He has to get the last hits with that Sunstrike. And it, and it is really quick iron timing from Sam. Nine minutes in, he's going to have the Blink Vanguard done. So he, he really does have to make something happen with this. If he's unable to do something with this timing, it's going to cost the team a lot. They prioritize giving Seb that safe lane on the bottom, where he's been able to farm up nine minutes in, Blink and Vanguard, he has to make the place happen now. And there's also a smoke on the courier, so they can immediately go for that and see what their target is. Brewmaster looks like he's in a pretty good position to break it, just in case. But they're eyeing up maybe in the mid lane. Top Anna, Jarek's heading over the Chalice, he's in, he's ready with the counterplay, pops the Primal Split, Anna and Jarek's in a lot of trouble as Jarek's gets focused down by the Primal Split, they've got the Snowball in, onto Anna, back up his inbound, Seb, he's on the side, can he look for the play, jumps in, gets the call, the Sunstrike down as well as Anna's back in, they get the dunk off, they'll kill off FY, but now Anna and Seb, they've got to somehow get out of it, Arme, into the Axe Swarm, manages to punch down Anna, Seb's in trouble too, he looks for another call off, can he get the spins, that's the question, Jarek's comes in, he's giving him the regen and the spin, it's a dunk, Seb, gets the second, he finds the double kill as Jarax will be fine and so will Seb. Seb gets sent back by no tell and TP's back in straight away. He wants to keep this fight going. We'll see if he finds another opportunity to get another blink off. Tries to go for Xnova, but Xnova just out of range still. The spirits hitting into him. They'll chase down. Do they have the damage to burst him? The Culling Blade just enough to bring him down so he gets bursted by the Sunstruck. OG certainly showing signs of being able to utilize this axe to take the fights against PSG LGD. Some small signs of life. Topson, thankfully, actually like that. That dunk is great. Sure, he doesn't get the last hit, but it gives it to the Invoker. He needs to get these kills to catch back up in levels in particular. Because the gold wasn't so much that the Invoker got, but it's just, it's all about getting levels up on this hero right now. Yep, exactly what Seven needed to do to push his team back in the game. And now, Invoker feels comfortable enough to go for that Midas. And another death. On the Morphling side too. I'm not exactly sure what he was an axe. He was an he axe was as axe and then just got obliterated. I don't know if it like ran out by duration, but Yeah, it did look like he didn't shift back into his here into Morphling mm -hmm. in time. He just got the Sep caught him off guard, I guess. So we have twenty five hundred gold on Samus. He hasn't quite picked anything up just yet. Maybe wanting to decide if he wants to be the one that goes for the Radiance. Because I did see Chalice queue it up earlier, but I think they're kind of debating who's going to get it at a better timing versus this Phantom Lancer. Yeah, I'm not really sure what Bloodsicker goes for here. Blade Mail is so so, but I, just, I think the Axe is just causing him all tons of issues. So that's right. They got the call off Chalice. It's going to be fine though. And Foy's in with the Snowball, buying time. Now Chalice looks to turn towards Jerex. Jerex is going to have to relocate back on his second fact, They get the call, they get the kill! They get the dunk off onto Chalice, they get the dunk off onto the Nova! And up top. Oh, they're Thomas. finding more maybe. Jerex, hand of God, keeps it safe for now. Somnus is back in, finishes off the kill, but Seb jumps in, has the call! Have they got the damage? Yes, they do! Sebastian Debs up and down the map, getting these kills, making it happen with the Axie 6-0-1, utilizing that nine minute blink dagger and Vanguard to perfection. He is coming in so clutch. During all this, Thompson is just sitting in the triangle of the dire jungle, farming, while Axe and Sebastian just runs around and makes play after play after play. They bring back the relocate with that Axe top, and it seems like it catches LGD a little bit off guard. And with this space, as you say, it, he's very close to the Midas, Thompson. Yep. Level 9, Bloodseeker level 11, quite a recovery. Yeah, I'm a little bit scared for the cords of LGD now. I mean, looks like Blessing could go for the Shadow Blade, Shadow Blade. potentially a Silver Edge later, but it's still going to be very tough. They kind of just have to ignore this axe and hope that the Brewmaster finds it before he can get that jump. Two care lead now for OG. As we say, with that Midas on top, and as long as they can keep making the space for him, he's going to be able to farm at a pace that will allow him to catch back up with the cores of PSG LGD. On OG, they have a lot of ways. With the Axe, they have so many ways. To, it's actually like a team fighter and also a pickoff uh, hero. While on LGD, they, their team fight is pretty reliant on the Brewmaster having his ulti up. Besides that, they're just a lot about pickoffs. So OG does have a little bit of a window here with this level 13 Shadow Axe. Blade. The reveal of Insomnus. Straining onto Anna. Anna's got the doppelganger. Gets himself out of the Bloodbright. Goes for the TP away, but the snowball's there from FY. Quick uppercut to finish off Anna at the same time down bottom. They get the call, the sun strike. It does not look like it's nearly enough damage though to bring him down as the stick charges come out and so do the TPs. The counterplay being looked for Chalice. Trying to find Seb. Seb 
It's gonna blink up in a second, and does it get off? The clap was there. Chalice able to cancel the blink, but Jarex comes through. Seb trying to fight back, he's got the call. Can he get the spins off in time? Into the dunk, the stick charges though. Keep Chalice safe, allow him to get the spin off at the same time in the jungle. FY and Ame, they've found No Tail. They'll be able to pick off the gen to the side as Ame in the axle and gets the call, controlling No Tail. The cyclone from Chalice, throwing Seb up. But they won't look to fight into him anymore. Seb will be fine. Just No Tail to fall there off the back of that play. But both cores again of LGD keeping themselves alive. They chalice with the clutch stick play there as he was very close to getting burst down by the culling blade. Ame's Looks like they're trying to set up on top, some on top. Ame going for it early. Uh, morbid mass so we can stay sustained in that. And also later on build, he could build onto a very useful item versus that axe. Cause versus, you, you expect that the axe is going to have a blade mill pretty early in this game. And Morphling very susceptible to a blink axe. Jack, that's the bait play. They get the call. Onto the two of them. Seb jumps in. The sun strikes down. The stun as well. The micro play. They've got the lockdown onto both of them. Somnus falls as well. No tail with his army of creeps. Holding them down, getting the two kills. They just can't fight in the set right now. He's, nope. He's everywhere. He's got uh, the bounties. He's just all around the map with the relocate. And every and time they fight in them, they just lose. And that blade mail is getting dangerously close as well for Seb. He can kill the Bloodseeker as well as the Morphling pretty much any time that he fights them around the map with this blade mail. And they just don't have enough damage for him. Like, he's not going to be running around with Rupture. Enchantress isn't going to be hitting him when he has a blade mail on. Morphling doesn't have enough items, so he's still going to be a threat for some time to come. And Brewmaster Bolt is very long cooldown relative to how often Sep can initiate. FY? He's going to be drawn back very, very far there. Sep blinks away as FY now uh -oh. surrounded as the relocate comes through. And then Jerex in to pick up the kill on FY. 4k gold advantage, a 6,000 experience advantage. And this is just OG running, out, running around his three or four heroes while Topson. Topson is so happy now. He's climbing He's back into the game. Recovered. He absolutely has. He's now level with the farm of Ame's Bloodseeker. And down bottom again, Seb finding the opening to make these plays happen. As Somnus found out it in the jungle. Seb 7 0 4 on his axe. And he wants to keep going. Ame shown his face in mid. It starts to strength more. Call off the mark. Space is there for them to push down on this tier 1 mid. TP coming in from Chalice. He's got the Primal Split available. Arme look to kick the fight off. Wave forms forward. Chalice jumps in with the clap. Holding off on the Primal Split for now. Now lets it out. Seb tries for the call, but the Primal Split's already there. Ex Nova with a wraparound. The impetus onto No Tail. No Tail's gone. Cyclone sending Seb out of the fight at the moment. Up into the air. Arme in the extra tries to surround him, but Seb gets the blink off. Away from Arme. The shards are down. Seb tethered up by Jarak. Seb walking back in. Tries for the call. FY goes for the snowball across towards Jarak. But now the TP, Thompson's in, looks for the combo, onto Arme, but Arme is back into the morphing, starts to attribute shift, back into strength, FY, uppercut on Thompson, Jarex, tethers across, keeping this his man alive as Anna, running himself away from Chalice, Chalice trying to find Jarex, as Jarex is into the trees, we've got Seb as well, looking for Somnus, but Somnus has the damage, they're on top of Jarex, Somnus gets the triple kill, maybe even more as Anna, now all alone, No Tail's trying to come across to help him, Anna, turning towards Nova, he's stuck in there with him as Anna will boss Possibly find her, he does. He's gonna have Doppelganger back up in a second, but the Blood Bright is it there in time? It's not. Doppelganger's back up. He could jump out. Looks towards Chalice. Spirit Lines finishes Chalice off. Anna gets another. Somnus did find No Tail, but Anna's still oh going. Can Somnus kill it? The Doppelganger's there. Anna trying to fancy rush himself away, but Somnus in with the chase. The Diffusal Blade on Somnus over FY with the shards. Shoves an igloo into the backside of Anna as he takes him down. What? A comeback there from LGD from the start of the fight. Pretty interesting stuff to point out too. I saw Chalice jump. You saw he hesitated on his ulti. He actually killed the creep, hit level 12, skilled up the primal split. So when he went in, he actually had the uh, higher level of the ult. So he got a cyclone in the back lines on the Phantom Lantern, delayed the fight a bit. But Ana showed up with that defusal, got a couple kills. But Somnus, the big winner in that fight, cleaning up almost everybody. He killed Topson as soon as he showed. Topson, yeah, he's, he's farmed, but he still has no defensive items. He just gets ruptured and run down by this Bloodsigner. And Somnus wasn't able to run around the back lines with the Shadow Blade that he had. Let's see if they can make something happen with this smoke play. Seb is in on Nova with the Sunstrike. It's the burst damage enough. It's more than enough. Max Exord. As they're now set up to push onto that tier one tower mid, OG. They're taking the one down bottom. And they should be able to find this one too. Primal split is up if Chalice wants to look to join to the fight. But they'll let that one go, PSG LGD, as OG claim the tower. 
I think they're gonna wait until the Bloodseeker has BKB in particular for the next fights, because when he has that, he's gonna have so much more freedom to take out the IO, go for the backlines onto the Invoker, and not have to worry so much about that PL. He still really has to watch out for Seb on that Axe, though. They're relocating around a little bit, just using it to push out the lanes. Jerex was in the jungle, but... They're forcing out the lanes a lot so that Axe does have these opportunities while LGD are still farming for their BKBs. Morphling is also... He did have a queued up, but looks like he's actually going for a Defusal next. Hmm. I'm going to see a replay on this once more. Again, sort of the issue when Somnus is, is enabled in, in terms of being able to just run ramp it around the fights as he did, getting that triple kill, and Anna does a very good job of course of picking some kills up in return, but at the end of the day the Bloodseeker is just too strong at this stage of the game, and if they cannot burst him, get that jump on him to start the fight off. Took out half of no kills awesome. in one hit. There they go, FY, they're gonna lean in pretty deep here with the snowball onto Thompson, Chalice jumps forward as well, they're trying to burst him, but Thompson gets the tornado, the MP out as well, but Chalice is already there with the primal split, so he can stand his ground and finish off the Invoker. Next couple of minutes though will be a good time for them to fight. I think without the Brewmaster there, the Cyclone, the Axe, I think that Seb will be able to destroy them in the fight. So this is a pretty good window for them if they want to try and force objective. I'm still curious about that Defusal pickup with Morphling. I guess maybe he's planning on replicating into the Phantom Lancer for a lot of these fights. That's good. Very quick snowball by FY. FY actually has a Blink Dagger finished up on himself, so they actually have a pretty good way to counter that Axe call now in the fights for LGD. But right now, without Primal split down, I do think it is OG's time to try to make some moves and capitalize on LGD while they're split up. I've got to try and find that blink call before the BKB is popped by Somnus. As he is ready with it. Zana, getting space down bottom. Only Arme down here to keep tabs on him. And a very close game. 21 to 19, 21 minutes in. Less than a 1k advantage for OG. As they did get ahead after recovering the lanes, but now... PSG LGD catching back up. They're starting on Roche right now. It's not the easiest Roche, but Nato does have the Medallion of Courage. But yeah, they use the Brewmaster ulti to secure that Bogan kill. But if you're trading that for an Aegis, I think that's well worth it for OG. But certainly LGD aren't going to let it go down with that fight. OG will jump in. They get the call onto X Nova. The MP down as well as Thompson moves him the combo. X Nova does get the heal off. And is able to back away. Now starts throwing him to Zin onto Sam. The tornado is going to be blocked off by Somnus. With the BKB, another call comes out for Seb. The sun strike from Thompson did find the kill on X over the send back on Seb, keeping him safe. Seb back to base. TP's back towards the shrine immediately. As OG, they remember up and own oh, Anna. Somnus. He's on top of Somnus. The BKB, of course, now one off, and they'll find Somnus as well. A double kill for Thompson as OG take a successful fight around the pit. They're at a 74% win probability now on Dota Plus. As OG, with those kills, go back towards the Roche. And there's a regen room waiting here for them as well. As this Roche will go their way. I love OG how, regaining that lead that they created. I love how adamant Seb was about just making the fight happen, right? They know the primal split is down, they saw Morphling down bottom split pushing too, so they're like, we have to make a fight happen so that they can't actually zone us out of this Roche pit in this time when we've got our window. LGD, they're just very dependent on this primal split steal here for the fights. As it looks like it's going to be a Radiance, as we were mentioning earlier for Chalice, to deal with that PL illusions. Yeah, it talks about it's more than online. That with that yeah. axe, it's been up for a couple minutes. Axe also going for the shadow blade so he can get more pick offs around the map. I mean, BKB is not super great versus the axe, but that's one of my primary concerns with the force of LGD, especially if you have blood rage on you. That's a scary part if you're Somnus. So, uh, as, you, as you say, I'll be interested to see how this works out for the more thing. Yeah, um, I with the diffusal this. blade complete, not something. That we see every day, but sort of as your theory crafted Ben, something that maybe he's looking to utilize in the fights when he takes over, uh, sort of control of being, becoming the Phantom Lancer. That's the best that's reason the, I can think of. Yeah, that's the only thing that I can see. That's very good callback. I mean, it's also good for him to try and eliminate the IO early on. He doesn't have a Glimmer Cape, but it's it's still going to be pretty tough with this Morphling. Especially oh. with that BKB. He's very susceptible to the Invoker. It can also help him like set up some kills if alone, right? If he does find anybody straggling around on the side lanes, he can pick them off with that defusal easily. They're hunting. Waveform TP keeps Alme safe though. He's out of the jungle. Yep, now the Shadow Blade is gonna be complete on Seb, and I think the Manta style is also coming out for Phantom Lancer, so 
Two big items, and with his Aegis, this is their time to shine. It doesn't even matter if Brewmaster has his ultimate. I don't think they're strong enough to take him out right now. So yeah. just need to stall for a little bit, wait for that Radiance, get your farm up, maybe get a BKB up on the Morphling, and then you'll be in fighting shape. Yeah, and fighting into OG just seems way too difficult, especially yeah. with Jarex, who's now level 15, has the Tethered uh, X bonus, and also has a full mech. So that's going to counteract a lot of the damage that LGD is already lacking in their, in their fights right now. So definitely just don't want to fight. They have a very good war set up on the side of LGD. They have four spread out uh, throughout the map. And unless OG are willing to commit a couple of smokes, I don't see them getting any huge pickoffs right here or huge objectives after a fight. OG's got good momentum pushing in though on every single lane. We even have the Axe Illusions cutting some waves too. All three lanes pushing in onto LGD's side right now. As OG. They're spamming those chat wheels. They're getting, they're getting like, into it now. They're feeling good. They're feeling it. Absolutely. Another tower taken by OG. Oh, Seb is, Seb is on the prowl immediately, too. Wow. How did it? Oh, they have a run over there. I was wondering how, he's, how he saw that coming. <laughs> so yeah, takes the morph duration as well on that morphling, as we've been seeing a lot of players. Well, the few players that do play morphling still have been doing it. Full Manta, Diffusal, and that Aegis on Ana. He is feeling very confident as he commits board onto Exnova. Oh! With the sun strike down, it doesn't matter. They are going to be able to juke it out here with the Snowball. Anna still trying to fight forward. He's feeling confident with the Aegis. Tornado will clip onto Exnova, but he's got the heal out and he'll be fine. Anna has been ruptured now. It needs the backup. Jarex in with the tether. Anna with the doppelganger dodging the blood right. As OG will be more than fine. There's so, so much first deal coming out. Yeah. With the tether and the hand of God and then... The mech. Now looking for another tier 2 tower. OG really starting to overtake the map. This bottom lane, Seb, he's in. The call, there's no attribute shift in time. Arme can't react with that Shadow Blade blink initiation. Power of that Blade Mail versus the Morphin, but also he was hit by that and huge sun strike. It's totally on. He has no buyback here, so OG. Uh-oh. Let's see if they can get anything more out of this one as they're into the base, chasing down X Nova. X Nova being focused by Anna. The Illusion Army chasing him down, trapping him here in the trees as he'll fall. OG, they've found two. They're up onto the high ground looking at this tier three tower. And look at this, they even used the Ag's tether on the Chen. So there's a Chen Ancient there adding oh. more health for them. Oh, look at this push they've got going. As the Rax now in trouble, Chalice jumps in, does get the Primal split out, finds Jarax. Jarax has gone, FY goes in with the uppercut. Anna trying to clean out some of these Primal split illusions and Jarax will buy back. He's coming in with a relocate, Seb being focused, but they're killing the Primal Split. It's only just down to the earth of the Wind Panda. The Wind Panda getting himself away from the fighters. He will still survive, but they've got the vision. Can he escape in time? Chalice! Oh! Nearly dies during the Primal Split, but Chalice will survive. OG, what's the plan now? Do they want to just get out of here? A Seb trying to get in position with his Shadow Blade. He's found Arme. Arme's in the PL of the moment as Arme just gets taken down. Dead for 50 seconds. Thompson being chased by Somnus. They've got the dust down Thompson as well. Hexnova picked up inside of the snowball. Thompson will fall. They'll find Anna too as LGD will hold despite Arme going down once again. Can they get Seb as well? Jarex is there at the side, but he does not have relocate available. There's no save for Seb. Did he just hold that snowball until the Aegis finished? Yeah. What? He <laughs> waited that whole time. Time for it to get. That's that crazy. was that was unbelievable. Oh my god! And effectively, at the end of the day, a full team wipe there by PSG LGD. X Nova he'll survive as well. They hold that middle lane. They may have lost a tier three, but they keep those racks alive. The push OG back. Coming in from Chalice and FY there. FY with the clutch snowball play there on that Aegis, of course. And Chalice, look at the damage he did in that fight. 6,600 because of that Radiance. Like you said, they were killing the Primal Split. The they primal were so split, close to killing it. There was still one alive, so each time you kill one, the Radiance just keeps passing along to the next one over and over again, so he just keeps dealing all that damage in the fight. I can't believe he survived. I yeah. can't believe yeah, it. was he's so close to dying. What a turnaround by LGD as it was a 7,500 gold lead for OG there. Chunked down all the way to 2k and the experience is now favoring LGD. And they had a different way of dealing with the Axe this time, which was rupture and just kind of leave him alone. He didn't really want to run around. He's not that tanky, especially when the Wiz is tethering up someone else. But uh, this defusal choice, he got wrecked. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I'm a strong, I'm a strong, I mean, you can, you can understand, as you say, he wants to try and fight as the PL, but that, of course, leaves him very vulnerable to, to getting caught out by Seb's 
blink yep. call initiation. Yeah, that's the thing. I think if PL were like the trump card in this game, with, like with no X and with very little AOE on the side of OG, it would have been a great choice. This time, I mean, there's not that many great items for him. I don't, I'm not really a big fan of BKB on him at this point in the game. But he does need to be able to not die with 1,000 HP. I think he just stays. I think he just stay morphed up very, very high strength and then jump into the fights, turn to the PL, and then that's when he can just thrive off of it, because if he's staying low, like you said, he just dies over and over again to the call, Blade Mill. Or even some Sun Strike. Smoke on smoke action, here's LGD, wrap around. They've, along the river. They've got level 18 on the brew, so level 3 primal split at the ready. Chalice on the high ground. OG got that ward down in time, and that's gonna set up for Seb to find the jump! And fight comes in there with the snowball save! Keeps his team alive for now, they're rolling on Seb. Seb gets the blade and now turns toward Chalice! He Chalice, he gets the split off! Seb, he's got down! Jarex now focused as well by PSG LGD! They'll get the two of them, Seb's brought back! The chase from Somnus, on to the hotel, into the trees, sets up for a double kill on the Bloodseeker, and Seb, he's been set up into the skies by Chalice's Cyclone! Seb gets the blink off, he's got the Shadow Blade too, but they've already lost three on OG! The dust is out, it will clip it's Seb! On. They've got the stun control from the Mug Golem, stopping Chalice getting the blink through! And Seb will just escape there, FY, that with so that save! That's the snowball play, Chalice even got cold snapped, but just by having that extra miss rate, he actually doesn't get that other one proccing on him, so he's able to get the primal split off. Unbelievable. It, every single team fight, FY and Chalice are just doing so much in terms of control. Yeah, Thompson tried his best to stop that split from going off, because yeah. he realized exactly what was that. was That was crazy. Unreal. So that's two times Brewmaster has just narrowly escaped death. He was, they were sitting right on top of him as a reward. That was a double call coming out from Seb to start the fight. They thought that they had that one in the bag. Yeah, it looked like the perfect initiation, right? Yeah. But FY is just like, nope. And that's why we have the Tusk. Those snowball saves, as we mentioned. And now he has a Yules, too. And this Yules is excellent versus the Axe. So this... Look, look at this again. Right. I mean, look, that, that ward... Beauty. Look at this beauty. It looked perfect, but FY in with that save, taking them out of the combo of Thompson. It just set up for the follow-up, and again, as always, Chalice getting that split off just, get just off. in time. And at that point, it was pretty much impossible for OG to take the fight back around in their favor. You see Seb buy back straight away, but he's already losing the rest of his scene. It looks like he didn't even have vision on the on maybe there. He was shadow bladed up and was still able to get the call on call out on him. Just needed a tiny bit more burst. And immediately because of that play as well, you see uh, PSG LGD dewarding that area of the map. Dewarding the whole yeah. their whole side of the map even. They're just like, we do not want this axe with shadow. Look how many sentries. Off. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten <laughs> sentries placed around? X Nova is like, I've got treads, I'm happy, I will buy sentries and observers. That guy does not mess around. He still does a fair amount of damage to all of his treads. I mean, if he can also just even enchant a PL illusion, he can start his own army going in a lot of these fights too. We yep. haven't seen it happen too much, but... They're trying oh, really hard oh. to kill these Asian creeps, but... He gets out in time. Yep. The dragon. Let's spot him. They want to fight this, they've found FY, Seb. They're going to close the gap, the sun strikes down, but it's off the point. They'll still get the call off though. Dragging FY back into the clutches of them as they find the Tusk. It's still going to be tough for Seb though. I think the Tusk was looking for enough gold to buy uh, Shadow Blade. He's already very, very far from duels. It's pretty much a mandatory BKB call coming out from Max now. When he started off the fight, forget about the snowball. Oh, Seb. Yeah, I mean, they, they, need the, they need that BKB on the axe now, so that he doesn't get disabled before he gets those jumps off. But even if he has a BKB, they can still get Snowball. They can still get so Snowball. It's, it's really hard for Seb right now, especially if FY has been, continues to play the, the way he has been. I think they, they, they have to find a way to get the back line. They have to find this, this Tusk in these fights while they do the initiation at the same time as the axe. I think it's up to Thompson to really find that opportunity. It's very tough for him, though. Him and the PL have to try to cause some distraction so Seb can get that call off successfully. It looks like Tusk is actually, you know, he's swapped up his build. He wants to go for an Aeon disc as opposed to a Shadow Blade that he just had a quick buy. Maybe yeah. just thinking along the same that you were. Fog. If they jump him, it might be over. Yeah, this is, this is going to be able to dispel it, and he's going to be able to still go for that opportunity too. Once that Aeon disc procs, you can even get the blink off afterwards if they can't deal damage to him in time once it, you know, since he can't take damage to an Aeon disc. I mean, as, as this game does go on, I mean, we're already at the 33 minute. Mark, at the moment, does one sort of lineup come out ahead in, in, in the late game in sort of your eyes? Hmm. Kind of hard to say because of how much work the Chalice is putting. I'd say yeah. probably LGD just because this Brewmaster's had such yeah. an impeccable performance. We'll see mid, can they get the jump? 
And that's going to show himself. Somnus pops the Shadow Blade, turns with the Rupture. Chalice goes in with the jump, pops the BKB. Starts to punch into Anna, the Blood Rise down. Anna getting silenced to be able to man to start it off. Starts to back away. The Sunstrike on Xnova, but it's off the point. Xnova will survive. Anna getting focused. Thompson trying to come into it for the side with the combo. But the snowball again from FY buying time for Somnus. He lists all set for Sol. He just beats into the Blade Bell. Sep's able to turn and get the kill. There'll be the buyback for the Blood Seeker. Anna trying to hold still, but Chalice, he's got his number. He knows exactly which one he is, Anna. Look at the doppelganger. Does manage to get up to the high ground, but Somnus with the buyback. He's there, ready to claim the kill. Those two are dead without buyback. They're down for 80 seconds. There's a brush available too here for LGD. Thompson's but immediately bottom down lane, bottom. Also Look at this army. He's got that extra Forge Spirit summoned. And indeed, with the Ancient Black Dragon, the Mug Golem. And, and the nope. Cobalt, they're in. They're pushing in. Yeah. They have to bring Chalice down here. He's the only one with the TP on his core heroes. They get the jump. They've got the dust. Thompson can he play his way out of this FY with the control. Meaning the Jerax cannot save him in time as Jerax will TP out. No tail as well. And will get away. Look at Rosha. PSG LGV. That's it. There we go. There we go. And Morphling's finally at that area of HP where he's comfortable. He can do a lot of damage and still be relatively tanky and not die in a call. Sev has not been able to get these clean calls. He still does not have his BKB. He's had so many items, but that is the one key one he's been missing. Just so much disruption being caused in the fights from this Brewmaster. Just every single time Chalice. he's getting into the front lines, messing with everything LG wants to do. Absolutely. And he's yeah. Shiva's guard closing in. John, FY, he's found himself no tail out on his own. He's trapped him. There's no tail. Is he gonna get any sort of backup? No, he's not. There's three still dead on OG. It'll be a slow and painful death here for no tail. Azame comes in for the kill secure. And I love the way that Chalice popped his BKB super early in that fight. He just knows, I just need to get my ulti off. And he cast it at a very safe range. He didn't wait for like the last second of his BKB. He's not, he's not very greedy. I think that's a lot of the reason why they've been winning these team fights. Seb has been struggling. Still about a thousand gold away from his BKB. Yeah, this, this Brewmaster is a display of perfection, really. It's the highest level in the game with his Blood Secrets. And doing a ton of damage in the fight. Mm -hmm. One of the most damage in the game as an off -laner. Now has full Shiva, so even, even more ways. He's pretty much itemized entirely just to be like, Ana, I'm ruining your game. I've got Radiance, I've got Shivas. You're going to struggle so much in these fights as Phantom Lancer. Jerex did his best to keep Ana alive, and he, he, but Ana wasn't able to do damage because he was ruptured. He wasn't, he wasn't that low on HP, but still can't run around. Seb. Oh, I'm going to do this here. Got to be careful Jerex. who shows up top. Indeed, Jerex. He's going out on his own. He doesn't expect Zame to have this invis route. And Zame will show himself. Jerex goes across, but Somnus is there. Somnus is not messing without ruptured. No mercy. They're feeling very confident now at this point, getting these very advantageous team fights as well as getting kills on the on the split push too. Thompson though, we'll find X Nova. Sep, and, and as well, between the two of them, they'll take down the support edge. Chef is going to come in though. He hasn't got anyone else with him at the moment. It is just Fy, so just playing around with Sep. He has no help around at all, and he's still just making Sep's life miserable. He, he is toying with him. He's just making him not be able to come back. Look, he's, they're already starting to rotate this Brewmaster and Bloodseeker too, and Fy, oh. he's ready to look for Sep. Sep's got to get out. Oh, Sep. As indeed Fy, the patience keeping that control on Sep. Buying time for Chalice to come in, Anna. It's going to look towards the Tusk. The Chalice is now there, does have Primal Split available if he wants to look to take this fight. Somnus coming in as well, as Anna, Seb, look to hide in the trees, can they get out of here? Anna's got a TP available. He's into the trees, he's going to show himself in the lane though. They're going to continue to head over, they are going to see Seb make it out in time. They don't have a stun, Anna, can he get out as well? He can. OG will avoid that rotation from PSG LGD. FY is just so obnoxious there, following Seb for over a minute, just stalking him. Trying to have his team come over. So that's about, you know, a minute without Aegis being used for LGD. They have two minutes left, I would say, to capitalize on this Aegis. Oh man, looks like he is level 50 Pretty much back to a 50-50. PSG LGD 2-1 up at the moment in this best of five grand finals. One game needed to secure the championship title. And at this point, they are ahead here in game four. No-Tail hasn't had time to gather a full army of Ancient Creeks. Right now, he just had the Ancient Black Dragon. You really want those other auras when you're at a big disadvantage in the team fights already. Yeah, it's tough though, because Jerax doesn't yeah, want to be following exactly. around his chat, giving him the agony. So. As 
Thompson. So he does have a Lincoln Spear picked up, and they should have the BKB finished on step two. So that'll give him a little bit easier time to get those blink calls offs as he's been suffering to do so in the last few fights. And Somnus, full Ive Scotty picked up, about to be level 25 as well. Yeah, they just need a couple more minutes on the side of OG before they're ready to fight. Wait for the age to expire. A step. Oh, oh, he's in. Gets the call. The character is going to get FY. He's there with the snowball save. He's going to be fine, and now they turn to look towards the axe. The taunt's going to be out. Seb goes for the TP. They've got the stun to cancel them. Seb held back for now. Thompson trying to offer his best from the side to, to provide some sort of safety as he will get sent back. They're able to get Seb back to safety and Thompson is running away. X Nova's there with the wrap round. Gets the slow off. Gives the vision for the snowball. TP from No Tails coming in towards the stride, but Thompson, he's trapped. That, that's twice in the series that X Nova just comes yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> like he's just on a warding expedition, then he just ends up wrapping behind these people constantly. Perfect time. Perfect timing. It has to send a ton of creep to move. And look at these deep wards that he's placed during that time that he was running around doing so. He now has full vision of OG. Yeah, he sees Ana farming these ancients right oh, now. Oh, Ana. FY just giving so much information for the team. He's got eyes on him. Get the punch on the wrong target, but the snowball pass will catch Anna. Anna, he's in trouble. The blood right side is good. He's got the man to back up in a second, but can he really play his way out of this one? He cannot. Anna down for a minute and a half. Just having just having all this vision. I mean, X Nova throughout this whole tournament has had the best vision in every situation, even when you wouldn't expect it. They're just like, oh, they're fighting on the left side. They're not gonna have vision over here. But no, X Nova always seems to have those prepared in every situation. He has some incredible foresight to be able to have these wars that just lead to really clutch pickoffs. And Axe has not spent his money on BKB. He has the money, but he might be looking to save for buyback. And we'll see if any of the buybacks do get forced out. Thompson's still dead for 15. Ideally, he doesn't buy back it. They may have to buy back on Anna. He's gone for 50 seconds. The split coming out from Chalice. He's ready to push in, look for the stun on No-Tail to hold back the Chen as the mid racks are exposed. PSG LGD, 40 minutes in, able to open into the base and clean out this mid lane of racks. Still Anna holding on to that buyback. And they're gonna keep going here. They really want to force this PL to come back here. Stun onto Thompson. He will blink dodge it. But another tier 3 tower falling incredibly fast. They really don't want to use it. Seb jumps in, gets the call onto FY. There's the buyback. The Cataclysm isn't enough to do anything. It isn't. PSG LGD still fighting strong. Thompson getting focused by Sonders. Seb taken down by Arme. The triple buyback's now out. Zana in trouble. He's pulled back for this one. The deafening blast onto the three of them. Knocks the back. But Anna gets focused. Seb! He's in with the call. He has the control onto the morphing Sonders. Now being chased by Thompson. Blinks in with the call. Seb. The PLR is on top of it. They get on this too! As OG, they have to expend three buybacks, but they hold on to the top rack. Somnus now down for two minutes. No buyback available on this Bloodseeker. Yeah, he's 400 gold short of it. It's up in about eight seconds. OG, had, they have to make so much happen here. They have to push out all their lanes. Two of the side lanes are already gone, but I think trying to get some kills here, like on FY here, would be very ideal. I mean, look how close to Brew is at 25. With, so close. With that primal split pull down. Oh! Thompson, he sees an FY, he's used the snowball, he turns with the combo, FY with the self fuels, but OG, they've surrounded him, Seb jumps in with the call, the blade mail, FY's gone! Instant buyback from FY. Still that scary, scary time for LGD, 75 seconds without Somnus. OG have the full five man pushing in all three lanes at the same time as they approach LGD's base. I don't even know why I give Ed up in this team fight. I mean, LGD are up in but no blood take up to 60 seconds. This could be disastrous. He's got a full BKB on Seb as well. Chalice really wants to hit level 25 before he pops that primal split. So close. Just got to be careful, Seb. Looking for that blink initiation. Chalice is stepping back. Grabs, they give him the tome. He needed like five experience and they gave him the tome <laughs> just to make sure that he gets it anyway. He's playing as safe as possible here. Looks like OG don't feel that the window is big enough for them to push in whilst this Bloodseeker's still dead. They'll back away. They can't count. They, they bought back three heroes. They weren't able to get any T3s. And there's no Roshan up yet. Big Daddy No Tail's praying for a Rosh right now so they can get that refresher, but it's not going to be out. And maybe we'll dodge a bullet. At least they got a good amount of economy off that, right? Yep. It was up to a 15k gold advantage, and they chunked it down to 7. Same thing with experience. So they did, they did get quite a lot out of that one, but they ideally wanted to get at least one of those sets of racks to get some momentum pushing in with those three buybacks used. Absolutely, it is this really scary moment of the game now for OG. We're about 5-6 minutes still without 
those buybacks available. If PSG LGD can find that one team fight, it could be the team fight to win TI in this window of time that they now have presented to themselves. Anna's gone full in for that butterfly too. As they pick up also an Aeon Disc on Jeremy, so protected in all. DD did spawn, however, it was killed. It's also pretty scary for maybe right now. He only has a five second BKB and he, he does a lot of damage and will get wrecked by the X Blade Mail call. If he finds it, especially with his BKB now, there's not that many ways to stop him. It's just all about FY and Chalice, right? Just either saving or just getting into the midst of the fights and not allowing OG to get the picks. And the spot. It's going to be dispelled. Let's get dispelled. But the uh -huh. He's in the trees, they're on the high ground, they've got the vision with the Shiva's covered, Anna's on his way over. Forward. They've got the snowball down, there's the counterplay, Seb jumps in, he's able to find the call onto Chalice, but Chalice already got the BKB out. The Sun Strike's gonna be down onto FY, but FY will survive. Seb pops the BKB, he'll try and stand his ground, but Seb, he's gonna go down, no buyback on the axe. And as Jerex as well, surrounded by PSG LGD, the Eon Disc will proc, but they'll fight through it. He has to buy back immediately. Look at the these creep track by these four spirits. On the bottom route, they have no creeps in the mid lane. Sienna. Still holding on to that buyback on Jerex. But as Ben said, the creeps aren't here. It's back door. The and they breach through it. It's not looking like it right now. Maybe that, everyone hitting the same one. That creep cutting, is it enough to hold OG in the game? You see No Tails already running to just... He, he doesn't care. He's going to throw his life for this. He says, needs to just keep these creeps out of the base to keep that back door up. He doesn't uh, care if he dies. Which he certainly will. As they get upon him, they find his life. One minute now without No Tail and without Seb. Topson, Anna and Jerex. The only three heroes that can offer their defense during this final minute, this Jarek. final stand. Jarex is really trying to hold on to his buyback. As Chalice split of course up once again. They're finishing off this second set of racks. He's got the Cyclone holding Anna up in the skies. As this racks on the top lane will fall, the melee racks gone. PSG LGD playing this carefully. As they'll go down towards the bottom as well, Arme, doppelgangers. He's losing a fair bit of mana into the PL. Still able to shift back into that Morphling if needs be. As OG, they will lose that top racks, but they won't lose the game. PSG LGD are playing it safe. They, they know how close they are to victory, and they will not throw it away. And they know that the Roche is probably respawning pretty soon, and it, it actually is up, so that is that refresher shard. They already have pretty much infinite primal splits up anyway, but... They feel very confident here. They weren't able to deward that ward in the mid lane, so it looks like they are going for a Roche fake out. So Anna is on top of X Nova. The ghost is going to be the set. Oh. He's in. The call. The EMP. The counter. Oh. But FY is in. He's able to get the save off in time to keep this man alive. Get and he's got it off. Chalice is down. Buyback from X Nova and Chalice. FY with the Invis Somnus, looking to get involved. Pops the BKB to get over the ice roll. They get on top of Seb. Seb's in trouble. Seb's gone. The axe down once again for 90 seconds. As now FY giving them the vision, but they see him. Got the doppelganger to jump away from the snowball. The snowball over to Thompson to the self fuels. FY trying to buy time for the rest of LGD to come in again up into the air. Arme straight on top of No Tail. FY will fall. Arme looking towards No Tail. No Tail pops the hand and got, but No Tail beat it down by Arme and Son. There's Chalice gets the primal split off as Anna. He's been left behind it, Thompson. He's got to do something incredible in terms of the combo. Can he find the angle? Jerex coming in, keeping Anna alive. Anna with the doppelganger. The Daphne Blast comes out onto the two of them. Anna trying to go in, looking for the kill. Can he find it in time? Onto X Nova. He's on top of him, trying to beat him down, Anna again with the doppelganger, now retreating back towards the base, as X Nova will survive, Jerax back in, the combo, people down onto Chalice, but Chalice is so tanky, boss the Shiva's gone, he's on top of Jerax, Jerax is gone, Anna as well, can he really fight back he's against the Sumnus and X Nova is so low, as the buyback for Jerax comes in, he's healing Anna back up, that buyback could set them up for the kill on X Nova, the cold snap, down onto the Ejection, they find him, Arme, he's out of battle, He's starting to shift into the straight, but he's surrounded. OG, can they find the ball? They can! OG is still in the game. Arme buys back immediately. But now it's PSG LGD's turn to be without two of their supports. Seb's going to be back up in eight seconds. 
Oh my god, that buyback from Jarex onto that shrine, being able to save Ana, but Ana also toying with them with that doppel. He set the illusion, they thought that was the real one. They actually couldn't finish him off, even though they got the thirst vision of him for a second. Oh. With the level 25 talent on the doppelganger, it's Look at really this. hard to kill him. Sep. Yeah. He's looking straight for the play. Can he find Somnus? He's hunting Somnus. He's there, Seb. He'll see him. Oh! Doesn't get the call, though. And now Seb. He'll be ruptured. They're looking at him, but Anna, he's straight in on top of Somnus. Somnus puts the BKB. Anna again with the double guy. They see Cataclysm coming out. And Somnus still alive. Anna will be able to force him away. They've got the head. Counts They've got the control. They're on top of him. Can they kill him in time? They can. Chalice got for two minutes. And Seb. He's finding, looking for Ame, Big Daddy no tell, gets the penitence out. Only onto the illusion though, Ame able to waveform up to the high ground. As Ame should be fine here. Thompson's got the ghost, so he's got Hex maybe, soon too. Oh, the doppelganger Ame's over the trees. Can he hide his way out of this? No, he's back. Real one. Goes for the waveform. Seb tries for the call, but he's already out of there. Nice, nice, out. nice play from Arme. And he buys so much time, too, for his team there. The brewmaster was dead for 120 seconds, now only 90. Still a big window for OG. They're only without Jerax for the same amount of time. And that lead the PSG OGD had, it is going down a little bit. Only 4K, 5K at the moment. With these last few fights, obviously the 25 is now coming out on OG. Thompson's into the pit. What a timely DD coming out for him, too. I don't think they expected him to be taken down as fast. He's almost able to solo it with the help of these summons. And that's that's a refresher shot. That There's no way they get this. There's that no way LGD can call. Oh, and the Seb level 25, too. That extra Berserker's call AOE. It catches people out. They don't expect it. It does not feel like OG or Q Rex now. At yeah. all. The Berserker's call now is, I mean, the AOE it's is massive. really massive now when you have that talent. It's so hard to play against. Can PSG LGD do it? They've got the Basher now for Somnus. But just a 2k lead with those last big comeback plays from OG. Still 30 seconds without Chalice. Double Hex coming out now. For Topslim and these five second BKBs. I mean, they were crushing with their BKBs. That's why. being spotted out. Got the vision. They're on top of him. Thompson, he's in trouble. The another fight comes up. He got the ghost walk off as well as the hex in time. Now, Somnus turns up. The blood runs down. Thompson! He's dead for 100. Has got the buyback available. PSG LGD will certainly look to force it out of them. FY just what a shadow mess. play. It just, yeah. As soon as they split up, he finds the perfect opportunity there on Thompson. You gotta be careful going out on the map when FY's alive. There's every chance in the world that he's gonna be watching you from the trees. And at this point, I think for Ame, it's actually gonna be very worth it for him to actually just try and burn all the mana from the Phantom Lancer so he can't doppelganger all the time. That's causing a huge issue in the team fights. And I see that Chalice is using his Dispel Magic every single cooldown on these Phantom Lancer illusions, but there's still way too many and they're causing havoc in these team fights. It's too constant. Like yeah. that double cool down being three seconds just allows him to always be able to play around a little bit around the brew. They don't really have the, this crazy AoE when you look at LGD's lineup to just clear out those illusions. It's really a lot based off them just trickling them down slowly with like the Shivas and the Radiance and knowing exactly which one it is. Yep, he doesn't have the crit talent, but now he does have crit from that Bloodthorn coming out. It's a lot of damage that Anna can offer to the fights now. And Brewmaster without BKB, very vulnerable. Cold Snap, Bloodthorn, Berserker's Call. There's a lot of ways that they can prevent him from getting that ult. He just commits it from the yep. back, just to be careful. Make sure that he can get it off and get some damage in onto the tier 3. Zana's gonna start to try and fight against these Primal Split Brillings. He'll be able to find one of them. He has been silenced. He'll take down the Wind Panda 2 as well, by the looks of it. As only the Earth Panda prevails, Seb. Jumps and he gets the call onto the Panda, popping the BKB as well. So they won't kill the Brulings off. They do force PSG LGD away long enough that Topson does not have to expend his bite. It's Thompson back in the game. But then they're utilizing the PL very well too, by propagating him, sending illusions to get some extra damage on the tower. It's just one Rax left that's holding LGD away from Mega Creeps. And they're straight out. They're ready with the aggressive play, OG. Thompson, can he find a catch? He's close to having vision onto X Nova. Should be able to find X Nova. He is stalking him. He got sights of him for a second. He seems a bit far away though. Oh, the tornado. It's got him. Thompson drops the combo down upon him. The stun comes out though. Oh, the counter play. Jarex is there though with the heal, the tether. Keeping Thompson alive with the invisible blade down. Can they save the hand of God? Comes through. 
Thompson, still alive, but Charlie's get the primal spin out. He's been stunned. Thompson, the cheese, he's fine. Thompson, he goes down. They get the kill under the Evoker. No tell. Big chase by Arme. The Bash is coming through, but the Blade Mail's already out from Sam. He tries to get the call off. The Bash of the Cataclysm isn't enough to find the kills either. Leading forward, the Bloodthorn onto FY. Gets the kill onto FY. FY buys back straight away. Anna, look at him all Somnus again. The doppelganger. Arme on top of Thompson. Thompson being saved by Jarek Shanks with the tether. Arme turns into a general. There's the call. Sam, he catches Arme. Arme down for two minutes. The hatch. They've got Somnus as well. Oh, gee. Double kill for Seb, the clutch buybacks coming into play, nobody has a buyback available right now. Azoji San with five alive on the map, 100 seconds without the Morphling. This, I mean, this Doppel talent is just destroying LGD. They have no way to actually find Ana. You, like Ben said, the Brewmaster is constantly using the Dispel, but it's so hard to find the real PL amongst all these illusions in all this chaos of the fights with tornadoes and chaos meters and everything falling all over the place. And look at this. The tier 3 tower falling. Ana, frontlining it all. What's he scared of? The Blood Bride will come out. Chalice with the Shiva's Guard trying to initiate. But Ana, he's poking, prodding. Beating down, and on the side, Thompson jumps in. Chalice gets in with the beacon, with the call. Seb, he's got the disabled on the Chalice. Do they have the damage? They got on top of the Chalice. He's into the snowball. and five buying time for him, but he now he's vulnerable. He's dead tags. He gets Bloodthorn. Chalice plays back. Straight back into the game. Anna trying to find his attention onto X Nova. Chalice leading forward. The tornado going to be off the market. Only catches out the Bloodseeker, but Seb, he's looking for the follow up. Jumps in, gets the call. The BKB was out of turn, but Anna's on top of it. Did they have the damage? Seb's got the blade belt. Okay. With the snowball again, Thompson, Jarex focusing the rags, Thompson gets the hex up onto X Nova, Seb healed up by Jarex, and is still full health at the moment as the Brulings are pushed back to the base. OG, get the bottom melee racks. And still 30 seconds to play without the Morphling in the game. They move towards the mid lane. OG, can they really get it all here? The mid racks falling. They've taken a full second, says 15 painful seconds for LGD. They're gonna keep going, they wanna claim their Megas. Another tier three falls. OG onto the final set of rags that LGD have left standing. Azana, he gets kicked back. He's separated from the team, but he has the double He's, He's been ruptured, he needs help, but he needs it now. Jarek, in with the tap of the hand of God, give him that low. double heal. The relocate as well, Jarek gets him out. As OG will successfully disengage before that Morphling's back in as they found both Rags. Jerax will die for this one almost certainly as he looks to tether across but the Nullifies upon him. He has buyback though and OG just took so much away from PSG LGD as they only have a lone range track standing on the top lane. I can't believe it's coming. This is only three racks left in this game. And one of them is a range racks on the side of LGD. Buyback status. I, I saw X was buyback. It was only like 600 or 700, yeah. which is crazy. But Jerax also kind of in that same net worth territory looking at a very cheap buyback. But two in the game left IO and the PL. PL is almost unkillable at this point. Like, even without the Wiz, it's still really difficult. With the Wiz, just don't even try. We'll see this again. It's the save game. here from Jarex. The, the, the control is just not there, and they don't have the way to kill all these illusions constantly. And of course, look at Jarex coming in, starts that relocate channel, and is able to get it off. No one gets the control on him. Keeping it cool at the time that it means the most, but he's still able to crack a smile here. In game four, the TIA Grand Finals. OG making a stand, now leading 9k advantage in net worth. LG able to join us. I don't believe they actually have any four staffs on the side of LG. That's generally how you deal with uh, deal with a scythe of ice. And I think they can get a scythe of ice on the core, get a blink call, and that hero is likely dead without buyback at this point. So OG, I would say definitely favorite at this point of the game, especially with PL having buyback. LGD, they have a couple minutes to think about what they want to do before this next motion. Yeah, they can't be totally reliant on FY just getting these like, yep. perfect snowball saves. Or even like, I saw in the last fight too when it was down bottom, he even tried like Walrus kicking the uh, IO away from when he was tethered from somebody else. They need to find some other ways to be able to save, in particular that Brewmaster, who just time and time again is the most important hero it does seem for LGD.
Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what they do with, with, the, with the BKB call. The Snowball is the only thing, but they have Blood Thorns, they have Scythe of Ice for the Tusk, they have a lot of things available. Maybe Aeon Disc, perhaps, for Grootmas? I'm not exactly sure what the best way for him to deal with it is. It looks like he is going for an Octa Ring, perhaps, for almost permanent... The sentry's down there. They see Thompson, but Thompson, he's already quick with the play. The Tornado into EMP, Cold Snap as well, they've got the Hex, but there won't be any further jumping. They just poke they're at our mate. They're oh. trying to make space. They got the Mega Creeps! That's the distraction play right there. Up against the Mega Creeps. PSG LGD, it's what stands between them and the championship title here in game four. And they got it right before that wave, before that 59 minute mark too, so we already have the Mega Creep wave coming in, that momentum pushing onto LGD's side. And you look at their lineup, can PSG LGD's heroes deal with the Mega Creeps? It's hard. They don't really have that sort of incredible D-push or AoE sort of hard hitters to deal with it. That's kind of what they've been lacking in a lot of this game, right? That's what we've been talking about with the illusions with the PL. They've got ways to find them if it's, or ways to come if they find the exact one, but as for doing that, it's very tough when they don't have just the dispel from Chalice. And he does too much damage to ignore at this point yep. with, the, with the Bloodthorn. And on top of that, Roshan is going to respawn in about one minute's time. LGD, I think their buybacks are going to cool down around that time, but I just don't think they can withstand this onslaught from LGD. They're, they really want to be able to prevent this erosion. It's super obvious when there's Mega Creeps. With Mega Creeps, that's the luxury that you have. You can just wait a couple of seconds. You know, the Creeps will be hitting at your T4s if you wait. As Ana commits forward, has no boots, but a full eye of Scotty. 3,800 health now on this PL, who hasn't been dying for a very long time. Now he's got easier ways, easier kill opportunity, and much more survivability. Yeah, he probably has like maybe 7,000, 8,000 HP effective yeah. with the Butterfly Evasion and the Heal and the Overcharge and the Hand of God is just way too much. And, and the Lifesteal from Chen too, which is another ability. Moji. He's clearing out the pit. Very, very soon to be spawning Roshan and PSG LGD are well aware. Roshan's up. It looks like only OG Rose. Oh, Arme. Right. Yo, Anna. Battle. He's some illusion, illusion action. Arme's gonna get caught out by the tornado, though. They've opened up onto him. Arme trying to get on top of Anna. The BKB popped by Chalice. He'll get the ult out. No tail getting gone on straight away by F5 with the circle. No tail's dead for 100. They'll get the Chen, Anna. In the midst of it, trying to lock down onto FY. Rest of his team about to come over to get the tornado. Out onto X of a step. Looking for the cool control onto Arme. Has he got it? Arme getting stunned up by the cold step, but he's able to wait for him. The Hygo Thompson blinks in. He gets the hex up on FY with the snowball save. They get the bash out. Saunders will be able to find the IO, but they're fully low on GD. That's Saunders there for two minutes. They get Thompson. Thompson there for two minutes. It's only Anna. Anna, can he do it here? He's at half out Lifetime as three dead now on LGD. No buyback. Simple fall. Anna kept alive off the back of that fight. As that very much looked like PSG LGD were able to tip OG over the edge, but that plus a hundred berserker score. You could see Seb as well being very careful with how he used it, keeping it to that opportune moment after any potential sort of Manta dodges have been done by Somnus Arme, and he gets the call. Nine doppelgangers used, on, just in that area around the Ancients from the PL, just the constant barrage of illusions giving that distraction to allow Sep to get that call off. And that's oh. another Roshan for OG. These fights have to be so hectic for the players. There's like 30 PL. There's <laughs> just both sides. I mean, even the Enchantress is like taking a PL, and then the, the Morphling turns into PL. I'm just impressed we haven't had any frame drops. You know? That's true. Azana. Now in the middle lane. Just walking down with a DD. <laughs> the tier fours. Anna says he's done with this. He wants to end this game. The buyback will come out from FY. Anna. It's going to be snowboard, Anna. He's in. He needs. He's not got any backup on the way. FY will be able to get up with the Invis, but this doppelganger. 
Just over and over again, meaning that it could just stand in. Now he's got the back of a Jarex. He gets Hex. Hex! Oh, he didn't expect it! He didn't expect the Hex, but he's still fine! Jarex at the Odish, but Hex Nova into the snowball. They'll turn towards Jarex. They had a goal coming out. Jarex has been nullified. They get Doppelganger once again. Hex Nova. He will survive for now. But buybacks were forced out by that aggressive play from Anna. At the same time, Seb did buyback himself on the axe. But LGD are back up as a full five man. Jesus, this is, this is insane. I mean, I don't want super safe there. I'm not exactly sure why Seb bought back, but I mean, he has heart, he has Wisp behind him, he has Aegis, he has, he has everything. He has buyback. And as you can see there, that, that is the big difference at the moment. Four buybacks available on OG. Only one available for LGD. Oh. All this momentum pushing in. And an, oh, an arcane rune up top. If they give that to Ana. Oh my god. Even more illusions, even more doppels. Oh. Let's go. That is. 2.1 second cooldown. 2.1 yeah. second cooldown. Oh man. Okay. Azana. This is it. He's ready to put it to use. Straight into the base he goes, doppling forward, he gets the jump onto X Nova, the ghost set to keep an X Nova fine for now. Anna, looking to turn his commitment towards Arme, Thompson comes in with a deafening blast from the side, the EMP finishes X Nova off, he's dead for 110, Seb, pops the BKB, looks for the cool control onto F5, but F5 does get the snowball off in time. Arme looking on top of Jarrett, but Thompson turns, they get the Hex out onto him, he'll get himself back into the ball, the BKB's out in time as Arme cuts down Rocha with a way for fights the kill. Anna, looking to get on top of Arme, the BKB's about to wear off. The Mega Creep speeding down upon the engine of Ajis. Set okay. in again. The call on top of Arve. Arve dead for two minutes. A chalice. BKB pop. And he's trying to commit, trying to deal with that. Anna being silenced by the blood right. But the engine is falling. The hex is out. Down. They're going to be able to find themselves. Chalice three dead on LGD. OG hitting the engine. Hitting the engine. Oh. We're goodbye. We are going to a game five. Here at the TIA Grand Finals, nonetheless. 